All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover how to get refraction to work properly in Substance Painter uh, using iRay uh, to get glass to look like glass. So the first thing is um, these are split out into um, different layers, and each layer, let's just do here. Um, so this layer is just the glass. This is just the liquid uh, that's inside, and then these are going to be a variety of other things. So, um, so it's important to have that split out and to know about that because uh, the refraction that we're going to put on is a shader level thing. So this has a glass shader. These guys have a standard shader. So um, the standard shader in this case, we can take a look here. Uh, the standard uh, shader is a, a PBR metal rough with alpha blending. None of these have any transparency, and so they don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch, switch those back to a PBR metal rough. So just use this sort of standard thing there. The glass uh, shader it has PBR uh, metal rough with alpha blending. Uh, so that's what we need for these transparencies. So we've got it set up where this has some opacity. So you, you can see here, you got an opacity channel and the opacity is driven down. So there's not see-through, there's completely see-through, and there's, you know, you can see some of it. Um, all right, so let's take a look and see what we get in iRay with that. Uh, this setup uh, feels intuitive. It feels like, all right, that's the way it should work. Uh, but you can see here that what you get is something that's really flat and very non-physically accurate. Just doesn't, there's no refraction coming through this glass. It just doesn't look like glass. Um, and so uh, what you actually need to mess with here, it's in the shader settings. Uh, so you need to, first of all, make sure that you had your object selected that had uh, the, the shader that you want to mess with. If, if you didn't, you can select here. So if I select accessories, for example, that will change back to that. Uh, main shader, the PBR Metal Rough. So I'll go ahead and switch this back to glass because that's the one we're going to mess with. And the main thing you need to change here is this refraction value. So just go ahead and crank that all the way up to 1. And index of um, refraction here of 1.5, that's that's a glass um, value, and so that should look pretty good. But you can see here that it doesn't really do much. Um, maybe it doesn't do anything at all. So let's take a look at what's going on there. All right, so leave here and go back to uh, mess around with uh, these different uh, shaders. So uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, so the opacity um, is down pretty low. So I could try uh, sort of putting that up higher. And let's take a look at what we get there. So now it's basically you can't can't see the th through the thing at all. Um, and that's really not what you should get. Um, so opacity is something that isn't really needed um, if you're dealing with refraction. So if you have refraction turned on, that essentially makes it where the, the element's going to be have some transparency. Um, but there seem to be some quirks in here about that. Um, so I need the opacity channel, but I can turn that channel off. How that makes sense, I don't really know. Uh, but I'll come back in here and render again and just see what we've got going on. Okay, so not getting anything out of that yet, so let me bounce back and forth here a couple more times and just take a look and see what we've got. So um, first of all, the transparency of the element that has refraction on is based on this color here. So I'm going to go ahead and push this color up to fully transparent um, for now. Uh, the metallic, how reflective that thing is, um, probably needs to pull way back. I don't want it to be something where you can't see through uh, so I'm going to pull that metallic way back so we're not getting quite as many uh, refract, uh, reflections. And then I'm going to pull back the roughness value. Um, glass is typically um, not very rough, so I'll go ahead and do something like that. And we'll just see if that's enough to get, get it working. And now you can see you get this prism quality out of this thing. And so really that's a combination of a few things. It's a combination of the opacity channel problem. Uh, metallic being set too high and the and the color being set to something where you can't see through it. So I'll just show you those things really quickly so you get a sense of this. So push this to black, go to render, and you can see you cannot see through that thing at all. You can tint, you can tint the glass, of course. Um, so this would still work fine. Um, it's just going to tint through. Totally cool. Uh, not what I'm looking for in this particular case, but you get the idea that transparency is based on uh, the value here. Okay, um, 
And then uh, again, uh, let's turn the opacity back on here. And so this is a quirk. Uh, so now you can see that even with the opacity on, it seems to work fine. If I turn that opacity all the way down, you see you can't see it at all here. And then render it again. It acts like it's perfectly fine. There's no issue here. Uh, this is very quirky because these exact settings, um, if you make a, a, a change that it doesn't like, uh, will not work for you. So it's just a little bit of back and forth uh, to figure out what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to push that refraction back up. So everything's perfectly fine here. No problems whatsoever. Um, I, th I can't remember. Like it was turning it off and turning it on, and then all of a sudden it wouldn't work. And when it registered this, it would essentially um, work the way that looks in the viewport where you wouldn't see it. If you had your opacity um, pushed all the way down, then you just wouldn't see the glass at all here. And so um, you can see that, you know, one thing that you might be thinking about this is, well, if you're not using an opacity channel, well, then why are you using a, an alpha test material? And it's a good question, but it just doesn't work without it. So if I set that back to metal rough and then uh, run a render on this thing, it just doesn't work at all. So refraction's turned down in this case. I'm going to crank that all the way up. And you can see this is the result that you get. I've seen some uh, demos that showed uh, it working with PBR Metal Rough, uh, no alpha at all, uh, but it just, in my testing, it just has not worked. Um, so let me let me futz around with this for just one second and see um, if I'm able to get this to do anything. So first I'm going to turn that opacity channel on. It does nothing because there is no opacity in this in this shader, and truly it does nothing. <laughs> uh, so let's just double check one last one opacity no difference right um, but then if I switch this uh, this shader back so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch that back to my alpha test um, or my sorry my alpha blending I, I don't want uh, actually in this case I don't think it makes much difference but I'll set it to alpha blend because that's where we were before uh, my opacity is is on and it's uh, totally invisible I'll go ahead and kick off iRay again and there you go. This, so this is the exact thing that I was just talking about where there just seem to be quirks. These are the exact same settings that we had before. Um, turn refraction all the way up. These are the exact same settings we had before, uh, but now it gives you a totally different result. So here I could push now opacity all the way up, and this should look um, the way it did, but you can see that even this, we're not really getting that refraction. See how where these thicker places are? You're not getting that, that kind of refraction. This just seems to be a quirk uh, in the system. If you turn off that opacity channel and then run it again, you get it and it works perfectly. So now you could turn that opacity channel back on and it has no effect. There just seems to be a little bit of a bug in that. So I just wanted to make sure that that, that bug was clear. So ultimately, if it's not working for you, just try going back and making sure you have a, some kind of a shader with alpha available, an opacity channel, opacity channel, just toggled back off and then it seems to work properly. Um, okay, so there are lots of things you can do with this. You can mess with, um, you know, normals and heights to break this thing up. In this case, this is pretty much um, what I think this should look like. I'll go ahead and play around a little bit with this, this ink here. I'll go ahead and create um, a new shader instance here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this one. We'll just set this one up. Okay, uh, something like this. And then uh, what I'm looking for, the reason I created a new shader for this is because I want to have independent control of how much refraction is added to this thing. So just like we saw on the last one, um, I'm going to need to add an opacity channel, or maybe I don't. Heck, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't need an opacity channel at all, and it'll just work properly. Uh, my, my general workflow on this was uh, it had an opacity channel, the opacity channel's off. Maybe it just doesn't need an opacity channel at all, and it would work perfectly fine. Um, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and just do this as a, as a fill. I'm going to turn that opacity off. I'm going to leave the height and the rough, I'm sorry, the height and the normal turned on uh, so that I can uh, make sure that it, nothing, is, nothing else from below this is bubbling up. In this case, there's nothing really to bubble up, so, um, so we're fine. But if you wanted to flatten those out, you need to have uh, these channels turned on, and then you can go in here and, you know, <coughs> go to your normal and set that to normal, go to your height, and set that to normal, and that way nothing's going to uh, show from underneath there. Um, okay, so 
same basic setup here. In this case, maybe we want this thing to be a red. So I'll just go ahead and grab that, and I'll do the same thing uh, down here. I, you know what? Let me go ahead and I'm going to add an emissive as well. So we'll go ahead and add a, a specific channel here for emissive. And this way we have something else we can play with just if we want to. Um, and so turn on my emissive here. I'll go ahead and grab this here. Oops. Okay, there we go. So just sample out the same color there. Uh, height and normal, just flattening it out. I probably want this liquid to be fairly reflective, something like this. Um, okay, well that should be fine for a, for a test anyways. Let's just let it roll. Uh, I'm going to turn off the glass. It's definitely applied. Looks good. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so it looks like it's basically working properly. Now if I want to see that refraction uh, show through here, start um, creeping this value up. Let's just see where we get here. So now we're getting that to look more, uh, more, like, a, more like a liquid. So we're seeing through uh, that element. Um, probably try cranking up that intensity. Probably a little overkill there. But depending on you know what you want this thing to look like, how magical you want them to be, you can play with this emiss emissive intensity um, for the for the ink itself. All right, and this does have some strange artifacts going on in there. Uh, I've seen that um, in my testing on other ones. Uh, so let me just see if I can figure out um, what it was. I've been able to get rid of that in the past without any kind of issue, but just want to uh, make sure I can do it here real quick. So I'm making sure that uh, displacement tessellation is off um, for these elements. Okay, everything basically looks fine. I don't see anything uh, quirky about it. Um, Okay, I'm going to start it with maybe just no emissive intensity, and we'll see if that's able to resolve that. Okay, so definitely uh, looks like it cleared up whatever weirdness was going on there. Looks nice and uh, nice and clean now. Uh, let me try pushing this up a small amount. Okay, and we got those weird artifacts back. So it may be some kind of effect of the... Uh, the emission um, that's actually causing that issue. I'm not entirely sure uh, what's doing that, but that that's a pretty good look anyways. I don't think that I would want to push this too hard, uh, but uh, I'm not even sure that that weird artifact stuff is something that is going to show up in uh, in other scenes or other views, but it does show up here. So I just, it's gone now uh, by getting rid of the emissive, it seems to have resolved that. Um, okay, so, you know, to finish this thing off, it would really be just refining things, uh, shift, uh, right click and drag to change the, uh, you know, the location of the light. So you can play around with that a little bit. Uh, you don't want the background, uh, in there. This definitely is a weird looking, uh, setup on the ground here. Um, uh, you could play around with, you know, some different settings. Um, you can clear, clear it out. So you, you don't have that there at all. Um, could match the background color, maybe for instance, to, uh, something that is already in the background. Um, so let's just see somewhere in here and then just really get that saturation down. Um, yeah, really low saturation maybe. So maybe something like that helps uh, helps these things come together a little bit. Again, just sort of swing that uh, light around to, to wherever you want it. One cool thing you could uh, futz with on here that's not on currently is just adding a little bit of that uh, caustics. So let me just bring this where the shadow is sort of over this way. Lights coming through uh, from the backside, which looks pretty interesting. Um, and then uh, it's just up here. Uh, you just have to enable uh, enable caustics, so right here. Um, and what that should do is that should add in a little bit of the light sort of coming through. And this would require you know a significant uh, a significantly longer render period to actually work out. Uh, you can see what's happened here is this is done 23 out of a thousand iterations in 10 seconds. So essentially all, all you'd want to do here is just allow this thing more time and then uh, hopefully that'll clean everything up. It already looks pretty good for a 10 second render, but it'll clean up all of this extra junk here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll pause the, the stream. I'll go ahead and set this to something higher. Um, 
maybe I'll just flip this to minutes and just let the 10 minute thing go. Probably it's going to hit uh, a thousand iterations before 10 minutes um, is up. I could always push the max sample value up and that way it would go to 10 minutes no matter what. Uh, but I'm just going to let this turn for a minute and then I'll flip it back on so you can see the result of this and then uh, that'll be that. Right, so that took uh, about five minutes to hit uh, a thousand uh, samples and uh, it's still pretty noisy in some places but it, it looks you know very decent overall. Um, so you know until you get exactly the right angle and everything like that sorted out um, you know there's no reason to really mess with this beyond that but uh, you know, a couple things you might try is just, you know, try out a couple different, um, whoops, need to go ahead and turn this back down. I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes every time I, I tell it to go. Um, and this is just a quick way to evaluate what you get. Uh, this is a little bit uh, of a warmer setup. Again, just shift, right click, drag to change, you know, the, the rotation of that. Um, even some kind of a, a studio uh, lighting setup might be, might be an interesting uh, look here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, um, so definitely a darker tone here. Uh, let me try swinging the lights around a little bit to see if I can find a better, better angle for it. But studio lighting is certainly a, a possibility. Uh, there are lots of different ones that you could you could futz around with. Um, it's worth just experimenting since this is this has such a major effect on the overall look. Uh, just try a few of these out first. Um, you know, see see what uh, appeals to you, and then uh, you know, just up your render time, uh, crank out some nice looking renders. That's pretty much it. So here's a similar render with um, you know 20 minutes on the clock. You can see here it's still got some fireflies down here. I still needs a little more time to refine this out, but basically all I did was rotate, um, you know, the image and then change the, the background color to match what was going on here, sky color, just so it felt like it was all tied in a little better. Anyway, there's a lot you can do to refine it. The main point of this was just trying to make the glass look like glass by uh, getting the refraction to work properly. So hopefully that helps.